Welcome to the Portionality Podcast, a curiously sermonic podcast playground for adulting over 30. Because let's keep it real, life will keep life with swift transitions, but together we can honor the moments we are in and keep on living. I am your host, Portia Williams Gates. Join me every Wednesday as we grow and live together. My dad, Patrick D. Williams, is one of the coolest laid back dudes you will ever meet. And in the spirit of Father's Day, I want to give it up and celebrate all of the awesome dads. But before I do that, I want to welcome you back to the Portionality Podcast. I am your host, Portia Williams Gates. Thank you so much for joining me again for another episode. If you have not already done so, please make sure you are subscribed to this podcast wherever you are getting your podcast. Shout out to everybody who's been shouting me out in this podcast out on social media. We see you. Thank you so much. I want to give a big shout out to Brittany Mackey, who is giving us all of the love on social media. We see you, B Mac. And so thank you, thank you, thank you. If you aren't already sharing, make sure you share, make sure you are subscribed. We are dropping episodes, new episodes every Wednesday and you don't wanna miss out. Mm -mm -mm. You don't wanna miss out. All right, y'all, in the spirit of Father's Day, which is rapidly approaching and we want to celebrate today All of the awesome dads, you know, it's dad and grad season, you know, all the graduations are happening. It's Father's Day, all of the things, okay, all of the things. And so I was quite fortunate to grow up with an awesome dad. My dad actually was a guest on this podcast. If you go back, way back into season one, five years ago, y'all, back in September, my dad and I did an episode on this podcast and I will actually link it in the description box so you can check it out. So wherever you are following this podcast, do listen to that episode because my dad and I, we had a really good chat. And so I just wanna say, I see all of the dads who are awesome. Now, like Mother's Day, like we mentioned on the show, Father's Day can be particularly hard for many people. Because let's be honest, particularly and specifically um, in America, we know that sometimes relationships with fathers and fatherhood can be really complicated. There are several persons who don't have relationships with their dads, who don't have relationships with their biological fathers, um, and may have father figures or other male figures in their lives who serve as surrogates and who are serving as mentors and leaders in their lives to kind of uh, not want to say fill the void, but who are allowing themselves to be present for that role of fathering, of being positive male figures. And so we celebrate all of the men and all of the male figures who are allowing themselves to step in as surrogates, Uh, for those who do not have relationships with their dads and have relationships with their fathers. And so my heart today goes out to everyone who does not have a dad or a dad figure, whether your father just wasn't a part of your life, um, whether your dad decided to not participate, or even if your dad has passed on, because that's real too. And so today can also be a big day of grief for those who had dads, who love their dads very much. However, due to life and life circumstances and life lifing, their fathers are no longer um, alive and they have joined the great ranks and the realms of ancestors, especially if this is your first Father's Day without your dad. I want to say I see you. Um, I'm sending love and I'm sending prayers toward you as you navigate this difficult time. Both of my parents have lost their dads. Both my dad has lost his father and my mother lost her father, both her biological father and her father figure, um, who I know as my grandfather, they have lost the, both of their parents. Um, and so I definitely have seen the challenges of if you've had a dad who is incredible and who has been loving and caring and compassionate and to no longer have that, um, it can be really challenging and quite difficult. So to all of the grieving hearts, you have my thoughts, you have my prayers, and I'm just praying for you today. Um, as you navigate the complexity of this day. And my heart also goes out to anyone who's day that today that this is complicated for, right? And but I also at the same time, right? Because two things can be true at the same time. I want to, like I said, shout out and celebrate all of the dads who are there and who advocate 
for their children, who have stepped up, who do what their divine assignment actually is, right? Like, I hate to say it, but I'm going to say it just like this because somebody needs to hear this. You being a dad is not some achievement that you just get a gold star for like wow we celebrate you for being a great dad when it was actually your job to be good at what you're doing (laughs) right if you decided to take this path if this path was something that you chose to take you know think about that right if this was something that you chose to take the pathway of fatherhood you know, and you're just like, yeah, like I should be celebrated. I won't say that you're entitled to being celebrated on this day. I think that people should acknowledge if you're doing a great job. Absolutely. But I think the sense of entitlement um, that comes with these holidays, (laughs) these man-made, human-made, person-made, woman-made, human-made holidays, we need to reevaluate, right? Because this is not a day of entitlement. But it is absolutely a day for us to show gratitude and to say thanks for those who have done what they were supposed to do, right? Like there are some things, and I don't know what child needs to hear this, but there are some things that you should absolutely expect and hope and want your parent to do. And I think that's something that we don't talk enough about is that there's an expectation that is set when someone decides to become a parent. Right. There's a difference between becoming a father or a mother as in giving birth and procreating versus taking on the role of mother and father. Right. So there's a role of mom. Mom is different from mother. Dad is different from father. Right. If you choose to be a dad, (laughs) there is an expectation where you're saying, I am a dad, that is saying that you are choosing to participate. Hello. You are making the choice to participate because anybody can be a father in the sense that you can father, right? You can be the male DNA to someone, but it takes somebody who makes the choice to be a dad. Anyone can father. It takes a choice to be a dad. So when we say dads and grads, you know, we use the language of dad, the whole dad thing is a choice. You are choosing to be a dad. So I like, again, I am shouting out all of the dads today, right? So there's a difference, as I said, between the father. I didn't say all the fathers. I'm saying all the dads. Shout out to all of the dads who are showing up. And I think that I want to bring that up because there's a dad in the biblical text, um, specifically a Jairus, some say Jairus, Jairus, who is in the Synoptic Gospels. He's in a few books, actually. He, he's not just in one book. He's in the book of Mark. He's in the book of Matthew and he's in the book of Luke. And I think it's important to bring him up because he is an example of a dad who is advocating for their daughter. Now, the Bible has several complicated father-daughter relationships, right? David and Tamar is a complicated father-daughter relationship. David did not do what he needed to do to advocate and protect his daughter. Um, We see in other relationships where we see fathers literally sacrificing their daughters in the biblical text, and that is something to be in conversation about, right? Who Fathers who are not protecting their daughters, And then you see the dads in the Bible who are showing up and stepping up for their daughters like Jarius. And then you see other dads and other uh, figures in the in the Bible Um, like you hear the story of the prodigal son where Jesus tells this narrative about a dad and his two sons um, and those in the relationship with them and how he treats both of them with love and compassion and grace. Um, I don't particularly like to use dad language around God, um, primarily because I don't necessarily see God as masculine, as male. I do think that God has masculine attributes in the same way that God has divine feminine attributes. But to just call God flat out dad, you know, I don't really I don't really get with that language. I don't really I don't even really get with the mom language for God, you know, mother God. Okay. Father God. Okay. I get that. But for the space of inclusivity, because God transcends gender, 
I think it is important for me to continue um, to reference God as spirit, as being, as creator, as sustainer, as uh, life force energy, as the almighty, the O ancient of days. There's so many wonderful inclusive languages that we can use to describe God. Um, you know, there's so many other ways that we can describe God. That's not just father God. And that language can be really triggering for some people, right? To say father God, especially when their father has not been present, which is why I distinguish again, the difference between fathers and dads. (laughs) And so maybe we should think about changing the language around father's day to dad's day. And I like that anyway, because alliteration, right? Dad's day, the day of dad's daddy day you know something like that because it expands what we understand the role to be around you know dads and fatherhood and because fatherhood is complicated and it's complex and it's not cookie cutter and as easy as we like to imagine that it is and so I definitely think that we should be expanding our language but anyway back to Jarius who I think is a wonderful example of advocating for one's daughter. So we encounter Jairus in the Bible who comes to Jesus and is like, look, Jesus, my daughter is very sick. Jesus, I need your help right now. I need you to stop everything you're doing and come see about my daughter. Now let me tell you about the audacity and possibly even caucasity of Jarius in the sense of how he literally comes to Jesus and interrupts everything that Jesus is doing to be like, look, I need you to come see about my daughter right here, right now. Like whatever you're doing is really not that important. I need you to come do this right now. And so when was the last time we saw dads and we saw these men and father figures and even parental figures, right? Let's really make it broad. When was the last time we saw parental figures or reflect and think about on your own life where we see father figures and parental figures advocating and standing up and saying, I need you right now to move on behalf of my child. My child is in need and I need help. I love that because I also think about the boy who was uh, possessed and he was actually having seizures. (laughs) Um, And that is also in the synoptic gospels. And the father who comes to Jesus is like, you know, I believe help my unbelief and my son needs help. Right. We see these dads coming to Jesus to get their children healed. And one of the most important things I think that any parent can do is advocate for the welfare and the well-being of their child and to seek help when help is beyond them. What do I mean by that? Sometimes we get so stuck and caught up in our everyday lives that we don't know how to ask for help. We don't know how to say, somebody help me, right? We see these fathers, these dads saying, Jesus, help me. I love the vulnerability that it, that is there, what it takes to say, Jesus, help me. Because we have this, especially in America, we have toxic masculinity where we don't give enough space space for the vulnerability of men, especially black men. We do not give enough space for black men to be vulnerable enough to say that you can ask for help. So dear black dads, ask for help. Dear black dads, it's okay to be vulnerable. Dear black dad, it's okay if you don't have the answer. Dear black dad, it's okay if you don't know what to do. Dear black dad, it's okay to ask another man for assistance because healing for our children is communal. Dear black dad, it is okay to know that there is a strength beyond your own and that does not make you weak for asking for a little bit more assistance. So I say that today where we see this father, this dad, go and advocate for his daughter and this dad that advocates for his son and these two dads that are coming to Jesus in the fullness of who they are to say, I need help. 
And then here's the best part. This is what I love. Jesus always responds to the needs of children. And Jesus does respond to the needs of people who have an advocate. So our children need advocates. We need more brothers, specifically, advocating, showing up for our children, going to the PTA meeting, going to report card conferences, going down to the Board of Education, going down to the financial aid office at the schools. <laughs> okay, get that tuition, boo. Like, really, we need more of that. We need more men, dads, father figures showing up because that is the pathway to healing. If we're going to heal the community, if we're going to show for our children, we need the brothers, both biologically, surrogate, Um, mentors, figures to show up, point blank period. And here's the other part. While Jesus is not a dad, Jesus does allow himself to not be a toxic masculine energy and decides to say, brother, I'm gonna help you. (laughs) Where, where she at? Okay. Bring the child to me. Where he at? Okay, what's going on? Let me show up in this moment, right? Jesus is so secure in who he is that he is not, you know, afraid. He is not so insecure that he can't meet the needs of another man in need. Okay, somebody, when was the last time you decided to help a brother out? Like, really? Jesus says, I'm going to help this brother out. I'm going to help this dude out, like right now. Like, I'm going to help him. His kid needs something. I'm, I got the resources. I'm finna show up. That's the energy we need. We need that energy. We need, I'm finna show up today energy. I'm gonna go assist this brother with his children energy. That is the communal village energy that we need. We need more men, more brothers, more dads, more figures, more mentors, you know, cousins, uncles, whatever have you to show up for other brothers. And we got to get it out of our mind that black men can't work together because obviously that's not true. There is so much space for everyone to eat. There's so much food for everybody. Everyone can get a piece. And we need to be able to lend our time, lend our energy for other black men to be able to share space together, to heal together, to heal their children together. And that's what I really, really appreciate about this text. I appreciate these two texts actually. Um, because I'm, I'm referencing two texts now, you know, because I just love how the Holy Spirit be moving on this podcast. Like sometimes we just gotta go with the child, okay? So we just we going with it, we going with it. And so I love the energy of these texts where there are two fathers, these two dads who show up to Jesus looking to him for help, and Jesus goes ahead and helps. And the power is in the advocacy. I don't even know if it's so much in the belief. I don't even know if it's so much in the faith as much as it is in the action and the desire to see children be well. What are you willing to do to ensure the safety and the wellness of your child? What are you willing to give to make sure that your child gets to live another day, to breathe another day? And Jarius's daughter appeared to be dead. When they showed up, you know, now we would say that she was in a coma or she was asleep, you know, that she just wasn't, you know, she wasn't conscious, right? But she appeared to be dead. And Jesus looked at her and said, Talita Koam, little girl, get up. And spoke a word over her life and she got up. This is what I'm saying. How can we create communities of care for one another? How can we create communities of care where men and our dads can lead and show up in the fullness of themselves, secure in themselves and advocating for the children? Because that's what it's really about, right? It's really about the children advocating for the new generation and the generation that is to come. And so we all have a responsibility to show up for our children. Like we all do. And, you know, maybe I think more consciously about these things as I think about parenthood and what healthy parenthood looks like in our household. You know, when we get there, um, when we do decide that we're going to be parents, like I'm thinking about all these things. I'm thinking about what kind of dad will, you know, my spouse be, 
you know, I think Jay's going to be an amazing dad and I'm excited about it. Every time I think about it, I'm like, oh man, Jay's going to be a great dad. Like I really, really think about it. And I am excited for him, you know, when that time comes, you know, I think we'll be great parents, but I really, really think that Jay's going to be a great dad. Like I really do. Um, like just the thought, you know, lights him up. I see him with other children um, and I see how they gravitate and he just has such a heart and love and affection for other people's children in terms of like being a part of the village of care and of love. And I think it's just so powerful. Um, and so that is what I want to leave you with on this Father's Day. And as I'm going to say the day of dads, okay, the day of dads, how can you show up for a child um, in your life? And if you're, you know, a grown dad and all your kids is out, like you grown dad, like, you know, you grown dad, you know, think about how you have done a, a good job where you can celebrate yourself and all that you've done you know, not just for your children, but maybe even your grandchildren, right? Um, So just think about that. And as always, please make sure you are subscribed to this podcast. Make sure you are sharing wherever you are listening. Um, We hope to hear from you. So go ahead and email us, Portia at Portionality.com. If you were ever looking for podcast services, hit us up at Portionality Media. You can go to www.portionality.com. All this information is in the description box linked here to this podcast episode. And if you want to hear that podcast episode that I have with my dad, go ahead. I'm putting it in the description box. Go take a listen to it. It's almost an hour long. Um, This is way back when, and we had a really great time. Um, So shout out to my dad and happy Father's Day, Day of Dads to all the dads out there. We see you. We love you. And thank you to all of those um, who continue to support this podcast. We love you. We appreciate you. Take good care. Take good care. Until next time. Bye.